Hello, I'm Michael Pritchard, the chairman of the PICO Group of Companies. I'm sure many of you will already know that we have had to make this very sad decision to close Picorama for this season. We believe it is the safest way forward for us all. Because we've been closed, we thought it would be a good idea to actually show you a little bit what's been going on behind the scenes, including the gardens. So we've decided to take a short series of videos, this being number one, illustrating what work has been going on with the gardens themselves. One of the lovely features of our gardens is colour, and behind me is a good example. We have a wonderful display of pelagonians. Now, hidden amongst the covers there are the letters NHS, and one of our gardeners suggested we put this in during the early uh, time of uh, lockdown. Here before us now we have this beautiful yellow uh, pair of shrubs. It's Genista hispanica. It's a sort of gorse type bush but with no spines so it's actually very friendly. This is possibly the first year it has been allowed to flower uh, which has been rather sad since the bushes have been there probably since the early 1980s. To manage the gardens we have a, a wonderful team of gardeners and I'd just like to introduce you to them all. First of all our head gardener is Tess, Tess Cook. She's just going to come in so we keep socially distanced. Hello. <laughs> Tess has been with us for a good many years now. She actually started probably in the office um, soon after leaving school. I did, 1975. 1975, September. gosh. Then she left and had a family and then returned as our head gardener. She's always been interested in horticulture and coming from a farming background, it's sort of a natural development. Secondly, we have Steve. Steve Summers. Hello. <laughs> Steve's been with us forever. Well, it seems like it. <laughs> he started as a boy when he left school at 16. Then we have Guy. Guy um, started work with us in the factory. And again, he's a, very much a, a gardener at heart. And when there was an opportunity to join the team, he um, asked if he could move. And we were delighted to be able to take him on board. And finally, we got Sharon. Sharon will probably be familiar to many because Sharon used to be in charge of the PlayStation. But Sharon decided, or asked, if she could join the gardening team. And we were delighted to be able to have her on board. Thank you. Um, but Sharon, I know, has actually found lots of muscles, uh, which she didn't realise she had, so that she's had lots of aches and pains. <laughs> is that right? Yes, doing lunges at my age is a bit dangerous. <laughs> Right, this is one of our few herbaceous borders put in place roughly two years ago. Um, we have many plants here of various shapes and forms. Here we have Achillea paprika. Um, it's a lovely flower, relatively dark red colour, and gradually it fades over time to, um, what shall we call it, a, a pale terracotta colour. Um, that gives a long lasting colour throughout the um, season in your herbaceous borders. And in the same border, we have Helenium cancan. Um, nearby, we have Agapanthus cobalt blue. And above, we have Stipa gigantica, more commonly known as golden oats. And below, we have Miscanthus morning light. I'm just going to say a little bit on this plant here in front of us, which is a Pittosporum. And it's a bit of a joke as far as I'm concerned, because it really doesn't do anything. It's sort of a, it may be a little bit architectural, but it's, it is uh, pretty boring as plants go. And so I call it, and my late wife used to call it, Pittosporing. On the other hand, this Pittosporum here in front of us is a beautiful coppery colour with new shoots which are coming out in green. And this one is called Tom Thumb. This is a salvia, but we don't know what the variety is, but it's got a lovely green colour there. But if anyone can like to give a guess and tell us what it or tell us what it is, we'd be very grateful. Uh, this is a 
Penstenum Raven. Uh, it's a beautiful purple colour. Um, it magically came here um, for a cutting. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a bit of a disease um, on the leaves, as you can see. Um, so if anyone can help us with that, uh, tell us what it is, that what, what the disease might be, um, we'd be grateful as well on that one. Uh, we have another penstemon here. This is the garnet variety. Really beautiful colour. It doesn't seem to have the disease like the one over there does, but is gorgeous. Lovely colour. I quite like it. I hope you do too. Um, before us we see an echium. Um, it grows between 12 and 15 foot in height. Um, they're rather popular in this garden. Um, you'll see them all along the coastline down to Penzance. Um, they don't like cold winters, so if you do have them in your garden, you would tend to lose them um, due to the frost. But we have a very sheltered garden here, and that's why they survive. Um, the tree to the left is a May tree that was planted by Christopher Audrey back in 2005 um, to celebrate 30 years of the Beer Heights Light Railway. This plant is attracted by the bees. Um, it's a bee magnet, really. And there's one up there. Yeah. Um, the tunnel mouth railway embankments have been left to grow wild flowers and go to seed for the wildlife so the bees have a habitat. The birds can come here and take seeds from the flowers. Um, it will be strimmed back at the end of the season and then it'll regenerate again for next year. Above the railway tunnel mouth, we have a Virginia creeper climbing around the fence, and below we have planted out with a South Bank dahlias in many colours. Also planted above the tunnel mouth is a new dawn rose. It's been here since 1982. This is when the tunnel mouth was opened. In front of us here, we have the fish bed, or what we refer to it as a fish bed. It is in the shape of uh, some sort of fish. Um, and sadly this year, a lot of the plants have been dug out by seagulls. So we're flying a kite to try and deter the seagulls from uh, undertaking their, their works. But what we have here are the, back to our annuals, no perennial stuff here, lots of colour. And the rest of the garden is pretty well now all annuals.